If you're not careful, you could actually buy an RV that literally falls apart just sitting in your driveway. And that's because most modern motorhomes are made out of fiberglass, two by twos, and staples. And even the RV manufacturers admit they really only build rigs to last for about 10 to 20 years. So you could actually buy a used RV that has one foot in the grave already. But if you come across any of these unbreakable vintage RVs truly built to stand the test of time, you might wanna buy it. So let's jump on the Magic School bus, buckle your seatbelts, and go back in time to 1931 when Wally Byam started the legendary Airstream company. Now what Wally did back in the 30s you're gonna see is a theme that extends beyond just the Airstream in this video. But what he did was he created a monocoque aluminum design where the exterior and the interior and the framing are all built with a lightweight, strong, and rust proof material. And because of this, it's estimated that of all the Airstreams ever built, 70% are still on the road today. But did you know that Airstream actually made a class A motorhome as well? For example, I'm a big fan of this 28 foot Airstream Extella with an Isuzu diesel engine. Well, notoriously underpowered, can get 15 miles per gallon. And when it's paired with this 70 gallon tank in this rig, it's got a range of over a thousand miles. Insane. Now the Airstream motorhome was so great that NASA actually used one to quarantine astronauts after they had returned from the moon. If it's good enough for NASA, it's good enough for me. But this is not the Airstream that I actually want. No, no, no. The one that I want was heavily modified by some industrious German enthusiasts to crawl all over the European countryside with these monster tires and probably a 4x4 drivetrain. Now I want an Airstream monster truck, man. That is so cool. But speaking of off-road motorhomes that you can actually buy, we have the 4x4 Tag Axle Revcon Trailblazer. I actually got to see this one at a festival earlier this year, and it's owned by a man named JP Smith. Built on a Ford F350 chassis, JP decked out his truck with a monster solar array allowing him to skip the propane and the large interior which could easily sleep for people is a little bit dated but very functional and would make for a great full-time home that you can take all over the place. Now Revcon only made about 67 of these so if you find one for sale you might want to buy it. Now you are never going to find this next one for sale and that is probably a good thing and I am actually talking about the Winnebago Hella Home. Yes you heard correctly a helicopter home. This 115 square foot flying home could apparently house a family of six for a quick jaunt through the skies with an opportune landing on a lake or a beach. And the base model, when adjusted for inflation, actually costs less than a million dollars. Take that, Earth Roamer. The Winnebago actually sold eight of these and none of them exist to this day, which is probably a good thing because flying around in your house is a totally ridiculous idea. Uh, unless you use helium. Helium powered flying houses are totally cool. Now for a well-made RV that you can actually buy and live in right now that is not extremely rare, we've got the Lazy Days RV. This classy motorhome built on a Ford E350 van chassis features aluminum skins and a well-made interior with a full bath and sleeping quarters for four. One of the cool things about Lazy Days is that it was started by two shop teachers in the 1950s, grew into a company that had direct to consumer manufacturing, which means that there were no dealerships or showrooms. You just got to put in your order with Lazy Days and get it directly from them. And because of the quality, they pretty much always had a lengthy lead time. Luckily, there are plenty of these classy RVs on the used market, and that's the only place that you're gonna find it because sadly, Lazy Days closed up shop just a year ago in 2022. They didn't tell us why. I would have to assume maybe supply chain issues. Now, another RV company worth mentioning is Chinook, and they started out making slide and truck campers in California all the way back in the 30s. Since then, they have made many notable rigs such as the Chinook Mobile Lodge, the Chinook Concourse Class B RV on the E350 chassis, which I'm a big fan of, and of course, the Toyota Chinook, which is a nimble pop top camper. And that's exactly what Toyota World Runners purchased for their overlanding rig, but it wasn't good enough for them. They picked up the whole thing, took out the frame and drivetrain, and put back in a 4x4 Land Cruiser. They heavily modified it, and now they seem to be bouncing all around overlanding trails in North and South America. Which you guys did was really cool. Now also built on a Toyota chassis and a step up from the Chinook in my opinion is the legendary yeah. Toyota Sun Raider. Built in either 18 or 21 foot lengths, this sweet rig has a great layout. When you walk into an original Sun Raider, you're gonna find a really sweet vintage aesthetic with a convertible dyna on the left, a kitchen and a wet bath and a cozy bed over the cab. Now this camper has a clamshell fiberglass design, which means that there is only one seam to leak throughout the whole rig, with the exception of things that are of course penetrating the roof. Because of this, you can usually find old Sun Raiders even when neglected and they will be in salvageable condition. I hope you appreciate this next rig as we go back into the bus for some more time travel back into the Airstream world where a young man named John Hall, who is actually the stepson of Airstream's founder, Wally, and after 20 years working as an Airstream engineer, John Hall set off on his own to pursue his 
revolutionary concept, aka the Revcon. In the late 1960s, John was looking at motorhomes built on truck and van chassis, and he felt like it wasn't good enough. So he came up with his own design for a motorhome on a purpose-built frame. He picked an Oldsmobile engine for the front of his rig so that he wouldn't have to have a drivetrain running through the frame, which allowed him to create a motorhome with a high ceiling height and a low center of gravity, which made it a lot more nimble while driving. He also used aircraft-grade aluminum skins for the exterior and interior, and a monocoque aluminum frame. John's design in the Revcon was such a hit that it was directly copied by GMC when they started creating their own version of it, the GMC Motorhome. What you guys pointed out in my last video is really quite legendary, but really GMC owes it all to Revcon. And the Revcon that I actually want is one that I have never seen footage of, and that is the big one. This elusive motorhome was stock 4x4, built on 44 inch monster tires, and weighed 18,500 pounds. It apparently retailed for $200,000, and because there's nothing else on the internet, I really want to know if you guys have heard of this before or know anything about it. Now what I really want to stress is that if you find one of these in great vintage condition for a decent price, they are a good value purchase. But if you find one of these that's been absolutely beaten to oblivion, it's going to be very expensive to bring it back to a decent usable form. If that's something that you want to do, I highly recommend that you start with a school bus or a transit bus instead. And if you want to watch me turn a transit bus into a tiny house in just one video, check out this right here. You're going to love it.